peace moms and peace dads because there are single dads so if there are some single dads tuned in peace to you too um uh, i'm back this week with another mommy issue i still haven't come up with a name that i like more than mommy issue so mommy issue it is until a new name pops into my head um but this week i want to talk to you guys about an article that was actually sent to me um but you can find it on daily mail so this article is about artificial breast milk um it's a company called biomilk that makes it uh, the creators are Leela Strickland and Michelle Egger. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I believe it's Michelle who um, is a scientist. Um, Leela uh, did an internship for Bill Gates, who surprisingly is one of the lead investors in this, or one of the top investors along with Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates. Now, those three memes immediately when I read this article just sent chills through my body and like drew up red flags because it's just like if you're reading things that are going on, you know, um, Mark Zuckerberg and Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos um, pop up a lot with doing experimentation, you know, on on things that I feel should not be experimented on, you know, i.e. breast milk. But anyway, um, these two women are... So when I was reading this article, um, just to put the disclaimer out, I was seeing red flags everywhere, but there were three, like, big red flags to me. So one of them was, again, that Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, and Mark Zuckerberg were um, the top investors, which was very strange to me because... All of these men are in technology, you know, they're not necessarily in humanitarian or um, women's rights, things like of that nature. So um, it was just kind of strange that they were the top investors, which was kind of actually scary because uh, when I continue reading, it was the way that they're coming up with this artificial breast milk is they are taking cultured uh, mammary cells and However they are doing this, they are getting the proteins um, that are in breast milk um, artificially. And that's what makes this bio milk so much better. So the first red flag was that these three men were investing into something that literally is so far left from what they, they do. Um, that was the first red flag. Um, the second red flag to me was, again, this cultured cell. What does that mean? You know, you see that when it comes to um, vaccines and things like that, uh, where they have these cultured cells or animal cells or, you know, very weird things going on. Like, to me, I, to me, cultured, uh, either you're coming up with it in a lab or you're cloning cells. And either way, it's not, this. it's not, the thing it's not real breast milk and so you know these cells are whatever they're putting into us can be made of anything i'm sorry y'all that's my dog making all that noise um but the third thing also um that rubbed me the wrong way or i thought was a red flag so they pose this thing as as this artificial breast milk that is supposed to be um, better for the environment uh, because the dairy industry um, is such a, uh, you know, has such a negative effect on the environment as, as we all know. You know, that I can't deny. That's absolutely true. There should be something out there. But when I started to research it, I'm like, formula that's dairy-based is only 10% of the dairy industry. You know, why are Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, and Jeff Bezos donating $3.5 billion to a company that's working to create artificial breast milk to supposedly make the environment better by using less dairy, but yet we still have cheese and we still have, you know, milk. Um, so I thought that was very strange, very weird. Um, I 
I do think that there is a serious seriousness to it as well, though. You know, I do think that there needs to be something where if you cannot breastfeed for whatever reason, but you don't want to give your baby formula, dairy-based formula, there should be some in-betweens. I agree. But this bio milk, I don't know. It's just not, it's not mm, the cultured cells, these three, you know, billionaires um, investing in it posing as clean up the environment, yet it's only 10% of the dairy industry. Um, it all was red flags to me. Um, more synthesized things in this environment, more things to inject chemicals in and put into our kids. So it's a no for me, um, but check out the article. I want to know what you guys think, or ladies think, um, and guys. I got to be including my guys too, but um, read the article. Let me know what you think. I thought it was weird. And again, it's a no for me. So, yeah. So, this week, I wanted to talk about Sunny's hair and skin regimen um, because that also has been a journey as well. Um, Sunny, like most babies, when she came home, we couldn't give her, like, the baths. We, can, we could wipe her down, but because of all of the, the new skin that was forming and all the dead skin that was falling off, they didn't want us to submerge her, and her um, umbilical cord was still attached. So we waited to give her a full bath until that fell off. Um, then once that fell off, I went right to... Um, Bird's Bees. So Bird's Bees, this is what I use. I can't, I couldn't find the lotion, um, but if you are familiar with the brand, they have original, um, then they have some scented ones. I use the original. Uh, that's what they advise, not to put any like fragrances or anything on the baby's skin at first. So I, I started with this, um, this, the shampoo and wash and then the lotion and Sunny's skin broke out so bad and it actually broke out so bad to the point where I uh, I took a picture and I sent it to her doctor and I asked her you know what is this normal is this something I should be worried about and she said it was a heat rash so that I shouldn't worry but I should lay off of lotions because it was the summertime I had her in April so by this time it was like May um so she said lay off the lotions she doesn't really need it it's hot outside just you know wash her use the wash and then you know you should be good um it went away, the rash did go away, but then it came back. And so I was like, okay, maybe it's the wash. Maybe let me try something else. So I tried Shea Moisture. I tried, um, what is this? The baby, co or the virgin coconut oil um, with sweet pea and maru, maru, maruma. I'm gonna look up how to say that, but this one. <laughs> I used the wash, the same thing, the shampoo and wash, and then the lotion. And I love the smell of it, um, but the same thing. And this time, it actually broke out even worse. And so now, this time, I'm like, yeah, I'm worried because it's starting to cool down. And I didn't, I don't, I didn't feel as though her skin should have been breaking out from any oils or any lotions or anything because it's cool out. And um, I also was using this too. So this is the Earth Mama um, baby oil. You can use it on the skin or scalp. Um, so I used that with the Shea Moisture, those three together, and her skin broke out, uh, even worse than it had before. And so at this point, I'm like, it can't, it cannot be a heat rash. It has to be a reaction to something. So, um, I decided to just do breast milk baths, which I actually put a picture up on Instagram a while ago. Um, but I, d I, I was always doing breast milk though. So I did Sunny's breast milk baths once a week and then I would wash her with soap. And so when I figured that these soaps were just, something was not having a good reaction with her skin, I was like, I'm just going to do breast milk baths and that's it. So I started doing breast milk baths. Um, and I take just about five ounces. If you have the, um, Medela breast milk bottles it's like a full bottle and i put um a little bit of water in it you want the water to be cloudy so you shouldn't be able to see the bottom of the tub um so if you do use less or the, the shape of your tub or whatever is different um the reason that i use five ounces is because that's enough to fill up her tub and it's it's cloudy but if you have a different shape tub what i'm trying to say is um you want the water to be cloudy you shouldn't be able to see the bottom of the tub um, so I started to do that 
and within a couple of weeks her skin completely healed completely cleared up i'm excuse me completely cleared up no rashes no dryness and then i was like okay now it's her hair her hair was like brittle like it it felt like if i was to rub it too hard like it would just fall out that's how bad it had gotten and so while i was using the shea moisture now i don't know if it was the shea moisture um but it just whatever it was i was like no something is not right so i ended up just doing the breast milk baths and in the breast milk baths i did like i said i did like five ounces of breast milk with the water made it um cloudy so you shouldn't be able to see the bottom and then i use um coconut oil as a moisture as a moisturizer so i put a little bit in the bath actually so you don't have to worry about lotioning them down or oiling them down after they get out they're all fussy and squilly and so just put a little bit in the tub with them um the skin comes out nice and smooth um that's how i use all of that's how i do all of sunny's baths now and her skin to me is perfect it cleared up um she doesn't have any blemishes she doesn't have any um blotchiness or any dry patches uh, which she had all over and she had like rashes like from her neck down like I was thinking like it was maybe it was the milk like dried up or I wasn't wiping it up you know um I was thinking I didn't know what it was I didn't know if it was detergent that we used on our sheets um but like I said ever since I started doing the breast milk baths every few days with a little bit of coconut oil um she's been perfect her skin has been perfect and that even got me into thinking like, okay, maybe I should make a breast milk soap. And um, actually one of uh, my followers, um, one of the moms that I follow sent me a message and said that she makes breast milk, bump, uh, milks, breast milk soap. So it got me into looking into it. Um, but once I started looking into it, I so what I didn't realize is that uh, maybe this is me new to me, but that lie is literally in every single soap. There's no such thing as soap without lie. Well, lie burns. It's a chemical. It burns. And so I didn't want to make something that um, had lie in it. So I was Googling, like, how can I make soap without lie? Well, it turns out there's no such thing. And so that's another thing that made me exclusively do um, only breast milk and water because of the lye. So that's why I never made a breast milk soap. Um, but, you know, if you are not afraid of lye and, you, you know, you want to use it, um, it's not as bad as um, some of these other products out here that have a whole bunch of chemicals in it. But I would advise to buy, um, which is kind of dangerous because the lye burns, but if you're up for it, buy it yourself or buy a soap base yourself and make the breast milk soap. Um, uh, that's another alternative to using um, all these products. Sometimes these products just have, you know, fragrances and chemicals in it that just don't react well with new skin. Um, so now that I just do those, like I, I just went on like a rampage, rampage, rampage. Is that what the word I'm looking for? I'm not sure. But anyway, I just went on. Um, my own little thing and I started to make everything for her so now I make even this and this is literally just coconut oil and vitamin E and I use this on her face um, every couple of days and then I made um, shea butter and coconut oil um, which also I think has some vitamin E in it as well and I use this on her hair and so all of her products now at this point are homemade um, that's really the future I want for my household in general. I want all of our beauty products, our cosmetic products to be homemade because that way, you know, what's in it and you don't have to worry about, you know, cause you know, as we know, even organic cannot be organic. You know, we don't know where this stuff is coming from. And so that's, um, part of my journey as well to move forward in a more natural, um, less product based, um, household uh, I actually was thinking too about starting like an herbal week because I'm reading this book. I'm trying to transition my medicine cabinet into um, all natural, all herbs. So I was thinking about um, doing like an herbal week as well. Maybe I'll I'll do that when I get to that part of the book or um, later on in this series. But uh, that's all I have for this week. Uh, thank you for tuning in again. Like, comment, share. Let me know what you think.